IMF says that India has one of the fastest growth rates of digital payments of any nation in the world. You know, we just launched WhatsApp payments in India last month. Um, so now you can send money to your friends and family uh, through WhatsApp as easily as sending a message. And that was possible because of the UPI system. The UPI technology of India is uh, going to be very helpful to other nations. It could be of great benefit as we saw today from the presentations. It Imagine a world where transferring money is not just a transaction, but a seamless experience connecting businesses and individuals globally. Well, you don't have to imagine, it's happening right now. And at the heart of this financial revolution is India's Unified Payments Interface, better known as UPI. Today, let's explore the incredible journey of UPI, understanding how it transformed the world of digital payments and why the globe is embracing this revolutionary platform. Brace yourselves for an exploration of innovation as we embark on a journey, unraveling the past, understanding the present, and envisioning the promising future of UPI. What is India's Unified Payments Interface UPI model? OK, so UPI, or Unified Payments Interface, is like a super convenient system. Imagine you have different bank accounts UPI puts them all together in one app on your phone. This app lets you do a bunch of things. Send money to your friends, pay at shops, and even request money from them. And here's the fascinating part, you can use this app no matter if you have an Android, Windows, or iOS phone. Each bank has its own version of the app. It's like having all your banks in your pocket, making money stuff really easy. Starting with only 1 million transactions, in October 2016, UPI has not just surpassed the milestone of 10 billion transactions, but has also reached an astonishing 83 billion in 2023, a substantial increase from around 45 billion the previous year. This number seems even more impressive when you realize that UPI made up 75% of all retail transactions in 2022-23. So why this surge? Well, the surge is because more people are embracing smart apps and technology, sparking a digital payments explosion across the country. Why did Google recommend India's UPI to the Federal Reserve System of the United States of America? Drawing insights from its experience in the Indian digital payments market and noting the success of UPI, Google proposes valuable suggestions to the US Fed Reserve. It recommends improving real-time low-value and high-value payments using clear and standardized messaging methods with more information and setting up clear rules for an application programming interface API layer in order to allow approved non-financial companies to easily use and send requests into the payment system. Ever wonder about how UPI became a game-changer and revolutionized the world of digital payments? And why is the world keen on this system? And how can India benefit if the world adopts UPI? Well, it turns out, it's not just luck. UPI's success is all about thoughtful planning and clever design. It's so impactful that even the tech giant Google felt the need to write a letter to the US Federal Reserve advocating for a faster digital payment settlement service. Although the US financial market values privacy and security, it is taking a step forward by launching FedNow in 2023, a new payment system by the Federal Reserve that enables instant payments and transfers 24-7. This payment system is similar to India's UPI app. However, key differences exist. Let's examine the distinctions between the two payment methods. Firstly, UPI functions as a robust interbank transfer system, boasting over 140 member banks, expanding from its initial nine. Secondly, it operates in real time. Thirdly, it's open, allowing tech companies to craft apps, facilitating direct management of transfers to and from users' bank accounts. UPI is the child of NPCI, a non-profit initiated by the Reserve Bank of India, and it is exclusive to India. In contrast, FedNow, a for-profit organization, is owned by the Federal Reserve and exclusive to the United States. Transaction restrictions in UPI depend on the bank and account type, while FedNow has a default transaction limit of $100,000, slightly adjustable by financial institutions, you can tweak it a bit. NPCI encourages every Indian to use UPI, 
emphasizing financial inclusion. It's seamless, speedy, with zero transaction fees. On the other hand, FedNow prioritizes real-time transactions for account holders, charging a monthly fee of $25 per routing transit number. Then there will be a $0.045 per credit transfer and one cent for a request for payment RFP message to be paid by the requester, including both requests for a new payment or funds to be returned. Initiating payments varies, UPI uses a mobile number or virtual payment address, which is a unique identifier linked to a bank account. While Fed now relies on the recipient's bank account number and routing number. Lastly, UPI dominates in India for P2P transfers, bill payments, and online purchases. FedNow targets immediate payments between American bank accounts for P2P, B2B, and government transactions. Why the US hates UPI? In the US, almost everyone uses debit or credit cards, mainly from companies like Visa or MasterCard. These cards are a big reason why the country doesn't have a system like UPI. In the US, lobbying is legal, and card companies often lobby against anything that might affect how much money they make. The influence of these card companies is so strong that when Indonesia was creating its new payment system, US officials convinced them to make the rules less strict, all because card companies like MasterCard and Visa wanted it. The same thing happened in India when the government wanted to limit Visa and MasterCard. These card companies talked to the US trade representative, saying they were worried about fair competition. The US trade representative then wrote a memo, saying Visa is concerned that India's policies seem to favor the National Payments Corporation of India over other electronic payment companies, both from India and other countries. Traditionally, the US heavily relies on its private sector, but whenever a novel concept threatens the profits of established companies, there's a tendency to stifle it early on. Take Bitcoin's rise in popularity, for instance. Major banks like Bank of America and JP Morgan labeled cryptocurrencies as a threat. At the 2018 World Economic Forum, Jamie Dimon, the CEO of JP Morgan Chase, went so far as to call Bitcoin a terrible store of value. Similarly, systems like UPI, which offer instant transactions, don't bring in significant profits for banks in the US or anywhere else, for that matter. In India, UPI has not been a profitable venture for banks and mobile payment applications like Google Pay, Paytm, PhonePay, and others. So, how do UPI mobile payment firms generate income in India? Commission income. These firms secure agreements with brands, earning a brand placement fee. Additionally, they collaborate with service providers for everyday needs, like cell phone recharge, bill payment, and DTH activation, earning commissions on user spending. You might have come across scratch cards with offers, where having an account with the specified firm could result in shares worth 1,000 rupees, frequently being transferred to your DMAT account. Subscription revenues. Income streams are diversified by charging a small transaction fee for each point of sale device installed at local stores, allowing customers to scan items and make payments. Quick loan disbursements. Recognizing the delays in traditional bank processes, these apps offer immediate loans, merchant loans, and personal loans, enabling them to earn upfront percentages, 2.5% to 3.5% of the loan amount. Collection services. These businesses act as intermediaries for lenders, collecting money from customers and earning a percentage, 0.5% to 1.5% of the total disbursement amount. Data collection for marketing services. Collected data is utilized to develop new products or assist marketing firms in identifying market trends. Co-branded credit cards, for example, provide upfront distribution revenue and a lifetime usage charge. So how can India benefit if the world adopts UPI? India stands to benefit significantly if the world adopts UPI. The global expansion of UPI has created lucrative opportunities for the Indian fintech sector, attracting a whopping 51.91 billion in funding in the first half of 2023, with expectations of becoming a $2 trillion industry by 2030. Person to merchant or P2M transactions surged from 40.3% in January 2022 
to an impressive 57.5% in June 2023. The introduction of UPI promises to empower businesses, enabling them to build robust relationships and expand their global reach. Particularly, India's medium and small businesses are poised to reap the benefits, especially in trade with major destinations like France. India has generously shared its UPI technology with several countries, including France, Australia, Singapore, UAE, Saudi Arabia, Oman, Nepal, Bhutan, Sri Lanka, and others. UPI's entry into France marks a significant milestone, establishing a foothold in Europe for the first time. While its entry into Sri Lanka and the UAE is set to deepen India's economic ties with these nations. In November 2019, BIM UPI made its debut on the global stage at the Singapore FinTech Festival, showcasing its prowess with a live transaction at a merchant terminal. This marked the payment system's initial foray into the international market, highlighting its proficiency in seamless QR code-based payments worldwide. Moving forward, on July 13, 2021, UPI expanded its reach to Bhutan through the Royal Monetary Authority, making it the pioneering country to accept UPI transactions via the BMAP. Interestingly, Bhutan now stands as the second country, following Singapore, to embrace Beam UPI at merchant locations. And as of April 2023, individuals with mobile numbers from various international locations, including Singapore, Australia, Canada, Hong Kong, Oman, Qatar, the USA, Saudi Arabia, the UAE, and the UK, can leverage the UPI transaction service. This service is accessible through non-resident external and non-resident ordinary accounts, offering a convenient avenue for users with specific account types. UPI has propelled India to the forefront of the global financial sector, allowing Indians to transfer money seamlessly through QR scan codes and various methods. While India has embraced digital innovation, many countries still rely on traditional payment methods. In Europe, check payments remain prevalent, giving rise to challenger banks and new age financial institutions. On the other hand, two Asian nations, India and China stand at the forefront of global digital financial innovation, nurturing a multitude of unicorn startups. The payment systems in China are dominated by Alipay, WeChat, and Union Pay, while India relies on Paytm, PhonePay, and Google Pay, all built on the UPI platform. While China's Alipay and WeChat, though seamless, aren't as straightforward as UPI. China's Alipay and WeChat, despite being dominant payment systems, may be perceived as less straightforward due to factors such as a potentially more complex user experience, limited international usability, standalone app status, and varying regulatory environments. Despite this, financial analysts predict that Asia, with its digital innovation frontier, will pose tough competition to the big five banks that traditionally dictate terms in the global financial system. The main objectives of digital transactions are to reduce the costs and risks of handling cash, increase the ease of conducting online transactions, and increase transparency among monetary transactions among people. The government of India has been undertaking several measures to promote and encourage digital payments in the country. And UPI marks the beginning of the made for India made for the world journey.